Hello and welcome on this hot, hot, hot day to the live webinar about redesigning a website. And it's a truly, truly hot day today in Austria here. 32 degrees Celsius, which is 90 degrees Fahrenheit, I guess. I'm not really accustomed to this Fahrenheit thing. However, this hot, hot webinar today is going to take a deeper look at how to redesign a web site. And the specific website we are talking about is the site State of the Browser from a lovely conference, but more about that later. And we will dive deep into how we can improve the design of this site, how we can get more out of it. We'll do an analysis on the design. Then I'm going to tell you a bit about the structure, how to think about structuring a website. And then after that, we're going to take a look at the design itself, dive into typography. So you will learn a lot about that as well and how typography elevates and also more or less, yeah, brings across the message of a good web design. And after all that, we're going to do some refinements, take a look at the micro typography and let's see how this will turn out then. Let's see how this site will look after it. Maybe, maybe, ah, no, no, I'm not going to show you yet, just yet. But this is what you can expect in this upcoming one or one and a half hours, depending on how hot I am and how much I can take this. But let's see it. Before we get started, I really want to welcome you and ask you here something. Where are you watching this out from? What is your profession and what's the hottest temperature today. So, as I said, I didn't introduce myself. If you don't know me, I'm Oliver Schöndorfer. I'm a user interface designer and also the guy behind Pimp My Type, the YouTube channel that's trusted and loved, of course, by you, if you're just watching this, about using the potential of typography to better convey your message and improve your designs. So there are Sebastian again. Hey Sebastian, I guess you're watching this from, let's say maybe Lower Austria or Upper Austria or maybe Vienna, no, not sure. Daniela, hi from Graz maybe. Then we have Manu, we have Stevie G, Stefan. Then we have Pavel, Germany in Dresden, 26 degrees. Okay, that's fair. So, oh, from Ukraine, we have somebody watching. Awesome, brilliant. Then we have Lisa from Denmark, 24 degrees. I envy you, really, truly. So then we have Bremen, 21 degrees. What's going on there? This is a chill summer for you. Here in Austria, it's steaming hot and I'm not just super <laughs> enthusiastic here. So Arizona, Phoenix, okay, so something. What, 46 degrees Celsius? Blowing my mind, oh my God. <laughs> Ma. John, how can you survive this? Yeah. Then we have Eddie, we have Ro uh, Ronald from Belgium with 21 degrees. You're having a chill summer again. Daniela, 27 degrees near Hollerbrunn. Okay, that's not that far away from Austria, uh, from Austria, from my place here in Baden, Lower Austria. Romania as well. Okay. And then we have some other from Turkey, 35 degrees Pina. Wow, wow, that's hot as well. Spain, 39 degrees. Oh my God. But Phoenix still beat that. So Carlos, yeah, I, I guess it's quite hot there. So. But yeah, let's not just talk about the weather. I really appreciate that, you, appreciate that you're all here. But three quick things before we dive into this even more. It is going to be fun and interactive as you already saw. There is going to be a lot to be learned. I'm going to show you a lot and explain a lot, but you will also have some time for Q&A afterwards. I will not be able to take a look at the chat all the time. So if I cannot answer a question or, or, or missed it, please repost it and be annoying until I answer it then. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about that. So let's dive right into it and start with the beginning, of course, start with the beginning. Again, how this day is going to be structured. We're going to start with an analysis of the website, of the state of the browser website, then continuing to the structure of the site, moving on to the 
basic design and after that we're going to take a look at the design refinement. Already said that I know but maybe somebody just tuned in and you didn't see that. But before all that let's start at the preamble how this all developed and why <coughs> I'm sharing this with you. Well I got to know a lovely person not sure if he's just watching right now it's Dave and Dave is from the conference I just taught you about, State of the Browser conference. I got to know him at Beyond Tellerrand in Düsseldorf, which is also a lovely event. Shout out to Mark, love this event, really. And Dave there told me in his soothing, deep, nice voice about coffee and about his conference. And after some weeks he contacted me and told me, do you want to share this conference with your audience and tell them about State of the Browser? And I said, sure, why not? Because I always appreciate sharing things with my audience. Anyway, or however, I want this to be helpful to you and also helpful so that you can learn something from it, not just promoting it. And then I ask, why not doing a live review and a live redesign of the site so that everybody can learn from it. So this is the idea behind this. Now, some of the things that I say today might sound harsh or brutal or rude or cocky or whatever, because this arrogant designer here is ripping apart everything and hating everyone who did a design like that. And, no, it's not that I want to devalue anybody who did that design. Really from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate all the effort these people put in to create an event for the community, to make this affordable, to make this interesting, to get speakers and everything. And maybe design is not top on their list or they do not have the skills. So I really do not want to devalue anybody here. So just to say that, this is the disclaimer section, as you say. but. I want to share this with you from the perspective of enthusiasm and how you could improve design. How could you make it better? How could you make it even greater so that the message here is conveyed better? More people know about this conference then and will attend it, maybe also online because it's not just in person. So we want to see how we can leverage its potential best. And from there, this is also a real life example and I really like that. It's not just something very made up or theoretical. It is something that you can actually look at and then also, uh, not showing the end result yet. So this is something that we're going to dive into and looking forward now to getting started and let's kick this off with the first part, the analysis. I kind of lost my cursor here. This is all live. <laughs> which is quite insane yeah all right so let's start with the analysis of the current design and this is all done in figma you do not have to know anything about figma you will get some occasional tips but from figma but it's not going to be a thorough figma tutorial here today it's more about the design process as a whole and you can use whatever tool you like photoshop sketch ms paint I uh, no, don't don't use MS Paint. Comic Sense, no. So not the Comic Sense jokes yet. It's not hot enough yet. So let's take a look at that. All right. So what do we have here? The current design of the state of the browser website. There are some things that I think are not working that well. First impression here that we have, we have a lot going on. There are a lot of elements that are all conflicting with each other a bit. It's quite hard to focus. It's not that easy to see what's most important. Is it state of the browser? Is it these illustrations? Is it in person and online? Is it tickets? Is it the date? Is it map? So there's so much going on. I'm having a hard time focusing. And when I go down a bit here, then I see that there's a lot of text about the ticketing and something that I really cannot read that well. Then we have the section of speakers. Okay. So, and then London Web Standards below that, who is an organizer of that, more info about getting the tickets, uh, see all speakers. Yeah, and then we have at the bottom of this the footer with a lot of links and buttons and very colorful everything. So about the speakers, quick side note, they did not announce the speakers of the 2023 edition yet. It's going to be announced soon, as I heard from Dave. 
but they have a real great track record of speakers like Leonie Watson, Hayden Pickering or Rachel Andrew, maybe uh, also Andy Clark and uh, Michelle Barker talked at some of these 11, this is going to be the 11th edition of this conference. So they really, really established themselves for the community. Just want to say that the Carolyn Coda and Dan Designer are not real person, uh, people and these are all just some mock-ups from, of course, Unsplash, whatever. Yeah, but I think you kind of guessed that, hopefully. I, I hope, yeah. So let's take a look at how you can um, also analyze this website and give it a bit more structure, the process here. So on the current design, this is a screenshot of the actual design. And here I did, um, I, I redid this in Figma. Quick tip, if you're using Figma, there's a great plugin which you can use. It is called, um, let me see, it is called, uh, what was it again? I already forgot. Builder.io, yeah, from Builder.io, just a shout out to that. And here you can uh, import from web and then you enter a web address and then you can more or less import the site it will not be perfect. You have to do a lot of cleaning up, cleaning up, but it's much faster than you would manually design this in Figma to make a redesign. So if you just want to pull something in from a live website, use this Builder.io plugin and use it here and set the width of the viewport and then it will import. So quick side note about that. Now let's start with this analysis process. This is a hard word. Is it hot or is it a hard word? I'm not sure. So analysis, analysis. So my overall impression I already told you. So which is too many equally important elements, unclear primary call to action. Yeah, I'm not sure what's the primary call to action here. And I assume it should be buying tickets. It is kind of there since it's in the navigation but it's not that clear. So, and then we have a very unclear alignment of items. Like tickets is aligned a bit to the right. This is also to the right, this to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, in, out, in, out, shake it all about. We do the state of the browser and we turn, okay. And you have all this hokey pokey stuff here going on. And yeah, it's not, not very clean. This is one thing I really like. This is very neat that they kind of use the CSS rule that you, yeah, it wraps around the text. This is nice. It, it, this is nice. I like that. But all the other stuff, it's a bit unclear and undecided and we don't want that. It's like looking into a pond and not knowing what to find there. Too much going on. Okay. So, overall impression. Then when you do the analysis of a design, next step would be the structure of the site, taking a look at how the site is structured. And I cannot really see in what sections this is defined by. So when I take a look at it here, what are the sections? Okay, maybe this is the a menu here. Maybe this is the, is this the heading or is this already part of the content? Where does the content start? So that's hard to say and the footer is clear again but sections are not that obvious, which is also hard. Then you have kind of, yeah, a lot. It's hard to focus, uh, as I already said, yeah. And then you have little focus on the speakers and then a, lost, a lot of focus on the tickets. So, and the ticket form here, which is so much going on. This is so much going on and so dense. So there's a bit too much going on here. And the speakers here on the live side, it's not already, uh, it's not in there. But when you take a look at my simulation, how the past years looked like, then you can see that this here is something that is, yeah, maybe people want to attend because of the speakers, then they will not know, know if that's, that's appropriate here or who is going to speak because it's quite late in the flow. So, and then we're also taking a look at the visual design itself now. So when it comes to the mood of the site, I already summarized this here, it's very playful, approachable and joyful. So the colors are very fun and that's, that's the vibe of this, of this conference, I guess. So 
What I do not want to do in this redesign is I do not want to change the color palette. I also do not want to change so much that you wouldn't recognize it because I think it already is established and it's also more challenging to do something with the existing components and to redesign that. I also think it's more realistic. What do you think about that? Leave it in the chat. Do you think it's better to start from scratch, throw everything away, or do you think it is better to take what is already there and do what's best for it? So tell me in the chat. And then we also have very <coughs> inconsistent parts here. So, and this is something that really annoys me because what do we have here? We have a lot of rounded things. We have these dots, this half tone aesthetic, which is a bit more cool, splashy, fun. But then again, we have these very square illustrations that take up a lot of space. I'm sure they're going to symbolize the different devices a browser can be used on. But yeah, this is very different to the other aesthetics. We have these rounded buttons. We have a very round typeface. We have also these round buttons here, but I think this is the default by Tito, which is the billing platform they're using. Then we have super, super edgy and square speakers. This kind of doesn't fit in there. This is very different again. And at the bottom of the page, we also have these lines, which is also again very different. It's not very org organic. This kind of wants to be organic and fluid somehow. And this here is very boxed and straight. So I see that these elements are a bit conflicting. This is not one idea of shapes that they are following. All right. So, and then we have a lot. Yeah, this background here with this pattern is quite noisy. It's a bit also, it's, I get it. It's repeating and it's also a bit cool and I wouldn't get rid of it as a whole, but I think it's a bit irritating, especially in parts like here where it kind of blends together with the text which is disabled, I know, but it's hard to read here. It's quite hard to read. And then we have the footer and the footer links are quite prominent. We don't want that as well because they're super prominent. Code of conduct, privacy, style guide. I'm not sure if I really need the style guide that prominent. Always shouting here. Yeah, <laughs> lost myself, sorry. Okay. Then we have the typography, of course, and now let's take a closer look at that. Yeah, the typography has a big problem, but before we do it, let's take a look at the chat. What are people saying here? So from Turkey people, sometimes you have to, what did we see uh, here? Just that I, I see what you say. Sometimes you have to use what's already there if time is an issue. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. Daniela said, take what is there and get the best out of it as people know it already. Yeah, that's true. So then yeah, use boundaries to spark creativity, says Camilla. And Paul says, I think starting from scratch in this case would cause us to make too many assumptions that violate the stakeholders original intent. That's true. Yeah, and this is all just guessing, uh, uh, Paul, because yeah, we are, I'm, I'm not sure about their intentions behind this design. I'm just assuming here. So maybe I get things wrong. Let's see. Anyway, we're going to build up our own logic here. And I, this is also something I do not expect to be that anything of this is going to be implemented. I just want it to be a great practical example. All right, let's move on to typography. Yeah, well, the problem we have here is we have unclear hierarchies. Yeah, it's, what, where are the hierarchies? What's most important? Yeah, and then we also, the typeface itself has a lot of disadvantages. I'm going to take a look at that shortly. And in some cases, the, the, the type size is somehow too small or perceived to be too small. It just really doesn't really work here. And what's also a problem is that it has little contrast because of the size. So this is also a, an issue. And yeah, different styles, you do not see this here, but on the live website, once you click the button or a link, the color changes, which is a bit irritating because yeah, in the main navigation suddenly, menu items look different and you don't want that. 
and when it now comes to the typefaces let's take a closer look at this the typeface used is called doses and doses is let's start with the pros a very friendly typeface i have a sample right here let's use this sample and by the way you will have access to this figma file at the end of the stream i'm going to point you to the newsletter if you already signed up for it you will get it anyway so there is going to be a link in the newsletter then that you can access the 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 figma file if you want to so and now you can take a look at this here this is the same type size two different typefaces one is doses and the other one here is sf just another alternative and we're going to take a closer look why i picked that alternative later but you can see this is the good side this is very soft friendly it also has a unique look it looks very unique and interesting this is the pros but the cons are it's super striking it's also very mechanical and also a bit dull it's very narrow it doesn't have any italics it also has low contrast quite light for the regular weight this is not the lightweight this is the regular weight which makes it harder to read and it is also has a very low x height and the x height is quite important if you want to use this for body text so for running text it is better to have a typeface with a larger x height the x height is the height of the lowercase x the relative relation between the uppercase letters and the lowercase letters and the higher the x height the larger the type size is perceived so in this case it's around 73 percent of the cap height and here it's around 63 percent which is quite low there are all there are still lower ty uh, typefaces with lower x height but in this case you would should pick something with a higher exit and again the good part here it's it's rounded it has these rounded terminals this is very friendly and soft so this can be appreciated however it is not working very well when we see it here in action let's take a look at it here in the body text it feels very yeah noisy it's not that hard easy to focus it's too little contrast also it's just Ah, when you take a look at the T, yeah, the T is, it, it, it's missing this uh, bar, the left side bar of the T is missing. This is cool, but it's not cool if it's in body text, because then it's annoying. And the same goes for the F, the F also. So it's super, it also, it's a bit clumsy. So please, it's not an ideal choice for body text because it's too striking. And as I said about the technical conditions. So. Uh, the good thing here, when, they, uh, when it's used in caps for the title or for the logo type, it's working quite fine, I think, still. Since here you can say it is something that feels a bit like a monospace even due to its narrow proportions, which also might be beneficial when it's about browser coding and all this stuff. So these are some thoughts on that. All right. Now before we move on is there anything that you would address in this design that's not that's irritating you or where you think there's potential for improvement leave it in the chat before we continue then um, we can also talk about that or if you have any additional thoughts about this overall design here all right it's already getting quite hot in here so let me take a short break and a sip of water mm. ah. Austrian water, brilliant, love it. Not from Fiji Islands, $40 a bottle, can't afford that. But for 40 pounds, well, this is a great segue, isn't it? But for 40 pounds, you can get an in-person ticket for State of the Browser. Yeah, this is a very affordable price, so to say. Just, just again, I really appreciate what they are doing for the community. Come on, 40 pounds for an in person conference this is just a bargain and you see that it's not about making money it's about making impact and connecting and only 10 pounds but you can pay more and you should i guess for the online attendance so this is very very affordable okay some other comments comments coming in comments coming in let's take a look at that so um i uh, I'll be interested to run this through the contrast checker. Yeah, 
I guess that at some parts it will be problematic, especially with the um, with this part fall with the in-person diversity thing. But it's disabled again, so you could say, all right, let's do it, whatever. So highlight not too good, user type, in, use type instead. Yeah, that's true. Then says art, art, let's say art. <laughs> Lisa P says, uh, especially the lighter gray uh, letters on the left, some of them are really difficult to read. Too many colors in the title. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And how many columns are there? The lack of clear alignment is hurting my brain, says Camilla. Yeah, that's tough. As a, again, yeah, you can make as many columns as you want, but you should make it easy and you should also make it clear what columns or parts there are and what sections there are. So let's transition to the next part, zooming out. Oh, why do I have a sec? This was an accident. Sorry for that. <laughs> That's the problem because here um, my 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 streaming software has the same shortcuts as Figma has. So you just witnessed something horrible. I hope you can all forget. So yeah, this is all live, but you know, you know. So. <laughs> okay, let's move on. All right, so here again, I'm grouping this section and hoping that we will not lose anyone. Okay, so that's working fine. I removed that. All right, now let's take a look here at this sections and I feel a bit like a chef at a TV, a TV chef like I have something prepared for you I already cut the carrots because who wants to watch me cutting carrots I, I know I want to watch myself but no I tried to structure this I also took a look at the code and found out how the site was structured and now we could say you have several sections here you have definitely the navigational section on top then this might be the header Again, with this very, very large illustration and in person and online, which is, I'm sure, important. But is it that important? Is it as important as whatever? So then we have this ticket section. And then we have the section where we talk about the details of the conference, the date, the place, the map link, state of the browser takes place in 67 days, welcome to the 11th edition, and then we have the history of state of the browser, and then we have the date, and then we have the ICAL feed, and then we have the latest speakers in the other section, we have the London Web Standard section, and then we have the footer, which is the cleanest section in my opinion. But now let's take a look how could we reduce the content? Because design is always about structuring content. It is about asking yourself the question, what should be conveyed here? What's the message behind this? Because form and function have to be a unity, have to be one thing. And when I look at this, and now I start to structure this again a bit, then the navigation, top navigation working fine, but maybe here we could move the date and the day and also the location to the header, maybe. Because then this is something that will also be highlighting that this is taking place right now. All right, and then we have here the ticket section. I think we could get rid of everything here and I removed everything here, just tickets in person from 40 uh, pounds and online tickets from 10 pounds. So uh, not, not 410, 10 pounds. Get tickets and information about tickets. And maybe the information about tickets is not the same hierarchy level as getting tickets, which should be a primary call to action. So this could be a normal text link and this is a button maybe. Same thing here, 67 days to go. Yeah, not sure about this yet. Maybe it could be something like history of the state of the browser, history of state, yeah, of the conference or something like that. And then we have map. It doesn't really fit in here, map. 
but I wouldn't want to put it there. We already have a venue link. I'm not sure if this is so important. Maybe we can just drop it. Maybe we can just drop it. Then the speakers, okay, there's nothing that I would remove. Maybe the, the latest speakers announced, maybe that's not that relevant. Let's just put in the two headliners here and then the others. And then London Web Standards, fine. The footer again, this is something that can look quite different. And here what I did is I removed everything. I put these, let's compare it again. I put all these links in different categories. So what did I do here? I moved London Web Standards here to the bottom. Here, Code of Conduct, Privacy, Style Guide, all are now links here in the footer and not somewhere else. The other links, social media links, are now here connected with an icon, not that prominent with the button, which is super, it's just too much here. It's not that important. The location or the position itself makes it important. So, or makes it expected that this is an external link or something like that. And here we have the other uh, text inside it. All right, so yeah, I moved London Web Standards to the bottom here. Copyright 2023 London Web Standards. So this is how I would simplify that. And now let's take a look at, yeah, I'm not sure, maybe we could restructure it a bit even. And this is our starting point then, and this is where we are going to start designing from. So we have the header here, we have state of the browser, and then we have the date again, tickets maybe next to this one, not sure about it, 67 days to go. And this is not aligned yet, it's just the map icon, let's, let's skip that one. The latest speakers, let's skip that one. Here the speakers, see all the speakers, maybe London Web Standards again, and let's start working from there. So I copied that one, or I did not, so let's copy it right now here using the Alt key and moving it over. And now let's reveal the user interface of Figma so that you see what I'm doing right now. And before we get going and started, my question to you here, anything, what do you think? Do you think the date is that important that it always should be in the header or should we keep it in the main section of the site? So what do you think about that? And when we take a look at the current web design, I'm opening this now in the browser. Wow, state of the browser in the browser. That's meta, isn't it? Not meta worse. God's sake, no metaverse, okay. So, but we can see that this obviously is the header and this is part of the content. And then once you click in and take a look at history or something, you see that this still is the header. So I assume that they kind of removed this because when I take a look at the previous versions of the site 2022, you still, you don't have the date in there. So maybe they want to get rid of the date there, 2022 and 2023, and you can, buy tickets obviously because it's passed. Yeah, it's already uh, here possible to buy tickets. And here you see that the color of the button is different now because it's a visited link. Ah, don't like that. And a tiny detail that really drives me crazy. So, okay, don't wanna, I'm, this is going to sound mean, but, ah, the browser, it's, it's the fault of the browser, this here. This here is not a true italic. It is not. It is something that is distorted and angled by the browser. This state is not, I can't, I, I just do not find any words for this. Because if a typeface does not come with an italic style or the italic style is not provided, the file, the browser will artificially artificially destroy it and angle it and it's just disgusting so please if you want to use italics take a typeface that has italics so okay stop ranting now all right oliver we love you i love you too sebastian you're the best yeah okay connie says i want to see the date asap all right yeah i think it's also quite important because you want to have in your mind can i make it to this conference or not so let's go for that. All right, good. Then let's start by maybe, um, yeah, 
we can start with the let's start with the navigation here so i'm going to remove the background here but one thing that we could definitely do is create these clearer sections now first we need some alignment we need an idea how we can align or arrange something on the page and what do we use for that a grid of course we need a grid true grid so and a grid i already prepared something here uh, let's take a look at that it, where it is where's my grid come on is my grid here i'm not sure if i i'm using the right shortcut <laughs> I'm too nervous. Is it Shift G? Layout grid hidden. Oh no, I didn't add it there. Yeah. And now showing it. Oh, there it is. Okay, just um, I just created a grid here in Figma, which is let's say twelve columns. Always good. One. I just want to look up the measurements here because the other designs followed that. Okay. So when you create a layout grid, you add here a layout grid, and then you can change this to columns, which is useful here. I hope you can see that well in Figma here, or if I should zoom in the UI, please tell me if I should zoom in the UI, but I'll, I'll do it anyway. I'll zoom a bit. So please tell me if the UI is too big now for you. So <laughs> it's getting quite hot in here. All right. So we have 12 columns. 12 is always great. Why is 12 great? Because you can divide by three, by two, by four, Great, great number. Can you divide it by five? I don't think so, but we don't need to. So two, three, four is already fine. Then we have margins of 120 and I don't really care how wide my center column is. I just want to have a max width there. So this is the idea behind it. And we all live in a fluid world where everything's breathing and fluid. So let's keep it fluid and not think about too much any pixel sizes. The gutter of 20 is all right. So let's keep it that way and have our grid here. So now once I have my grid, I can align elements here and I can put them maybe here to the left, to the right, whatever. And you can see also how things align here. Now, when we take a look at the navigation, we can, mm, we could make this a bit more separate. But before we dive into this details, I think we should change the typeface. Of course, the typeface first. Why do I want to change the typeface first? What do you think? What do you think why we should start by picking another typeface? Type it in the chat. Type face it in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look what you're typing. We have some latency here, oh, but I'm okay with that. I'm good with that. Let's take a sip of water to re rejuvenate and recover from all that heat. <clears throat> yeah. The typeface, again, as I told you, isn't that ideal. And we also uh, ranted about the full italics. So we should pick something that comes with italics. So, and Daniela says, readability is important. Have the opinion on uh, having the option of cursive or of, of, of an italic. Yes, please. <laughs> and the typeface itself here. I do not want to change the vibe of this site totally. I, I, I really do not want to change it at all. Uh, I just want to pick something that is appropriate for body text and is working for body text. So let's take a look at that. And when I would browse something now, I would pick a free font. Why a free font? I don't know what they are planning. Maybe they put this on GitHub to share it. Not sure about that. And if you use a typeface you have to pay for, then it won't work because licensing, of course. So let's stick with a free font. And the typeface I already showed you, which is ASAP, is a great example. Why? Let's zoom out a bit and move to this again. It is somehow like the other typeface, like Doses, but it seems larger. It is really, really much more appropriate. It isn't that striking, but it's still got this softly rounded terminals. It's more squarish again not really rounded but something in between but it's still got a very approachable friendly vibe to it and i think it would pair well if we use doses or kept doses for the headings maybe maybe so let's take a look at that and now i would for for the for the beginning i would start 
checking the, the typeface. So when I'm selecting something in Figma, I'm always clicking the Alt key so that I, uh, the, the Shift key or the Alt key if it's nested inside something so can, I can directly select it, which is very helpful. I do not have to ungroup things or double click to select them at once. We now could start by creating some layer styles. I will not do that because of timing, but you know that this would be more appropriate. And once I click in here, you could use, let's say, ASAP again here and boom, bam, immediately. Come on, we have to see this again in slow-mo. Whoa. This was Dosis and this, bam, the same font size. Isn't this insane? It's the same font size, but it's so much more readable. Love this. And another tiny thing that we didn't cover here is that they use within the design here, they use the semi-bold style for the emphasis or for the strong highlights. I wouldn't use that. Make it bold or make it not bold, but do not make it semi-bold to highlight things. So make it really bold so that it really stands out. Again, here's the difference. Bold, a semi-bold, bold. So make it really bold, make it bold. So. <laughs> Got it, okay. Then we have our title still. So with the titles, we could, let's say, for example, we should, we should reuse as much as we could. And I really like how this is looking in all caps. So we could make this all caps. So just keeping doses again, the same typeface, but making it all caps. And when we here, oh, this is because of Figma. So when we set it here in, all caps it's quite striking but here we should do it bold as well so that it really stands out we could also change the tracking a bit so it doesn't stick together that much this is always a tip if you're using all caps change the tracking and increase the tracking which is the letter spacing in CSS terms so here we could increase that and then it already looks better and when it comes to the button, I already prepared something and replaced it with a different one. And here you see, ah, this looks so much better. Just again, before and after. This is also wider now and easier to read. It's clearer. So, and what do we have in here? We have ASAP, but we have the medium weight here, just so that it is more working together in alignment with the contrast of the icons. So this is something we could also do here. And then when it comes to the, to the other parts, so this is an idea we could, yeah, we could use. And before we start doing this, all the details, I prepared something, as I said, and we're going to start from there again and continue here because it might take forever to do it now in the live stream. And what did I change here? So what did I do? I used the design here on top and just to make this section cleaner, just to make it clear that this here on top is the navigation to move it away, to move it apart. And what I also did here is I moved up the date again, getting tickets. We already saw that I made this bold here. It's even bolder, it's extra bold. I think this is, also, yeah, this is extra bold from the title. So I think I used it because of that. And for the latest speakers, and this was very different, as you see, it doesn't really have the same vibe or idea. And what did I do here? I used the graphic from this background. Then I used an image here, the all caps title, and kind of blend this all together. I used a drop shadow, which is here just to say, you see the drop shadow here and to make this a bit show some irregularities not making everything very strict making it more playful and adding this to this half tone dotted style around it that is here um, revealing itself in the background carolyn coda here also something playful uh, positioning this on top and here on the bottom with various uh, images all not real 
of course not really speakers they will announce that soon and after that what i did here in the last section i kind of aligned this because i like the idea of this star and centering things and so i th you could also align the text or wrap the text around it here maybe but I can't do that in Figma right now and I won't do, it will take too much time just to enter in one, two, uh, uh, whatever. So I won't do that, yeah? But you get what I mean. And we still have the different typeface here. We do not use ASAP yet, but this is just a starting point to structure it. And for the bottom navigation, we already did that. I already mentioned that. All right, let's take a look. So you kind of said it will change so much that it has to come first, the text. Yes, that's true. Because everything downstream will be more work if you change the typeface later. If you really change it later, it's too much work to catch up and to do it differently. So I wouldn't do that later. I would do it as fast as I can in the process. First things first. Typeface influences everything later on. All right. And now when it comes to the typeface itself, yeah, I want this to be more or less similar. So when I now take a look at the next step of this process, let's copy it from here and see what this evolved to. Oh, this is getting hot here. It's hot in here. Woo! <laughs> it's really hot in here. No, what did I do here? I just started by changing some things and I added some elements in here. I changed the alignment of the menu to the right side just to make it a bit clearer and give the logo a bit more room to breathe, some air to breathe. And what I also did is that I added this wave here. And there are some great tools. Shout out to a great site, which is called tools.design by Pascal. I really, really appreciate his weekly newsletter. So check this out on the site tools.design. And here you can see that you can look for, let's see, SVG, whatever. And then you get some things like waves or uh, I, I'm not sure. And here I found somewhere a generator that did it search? Not sure. So, but SVG waves, yeah, there it is. And here I generated some layers. You can add the layers and then you can add, can add waves or make them wavier or not wavier. Oh, this is wild. So, and then you can copy this and download this. And I did that just to show you. Here are some assets and I used that just to have some waves. Why waves? Not just because it rhymes because it doesn't rhyme even. So I'm not sure what I'm talking. But the waves here, they are just uh, something that are more organic and they also, I think they more reflect the idea of this state of the browser. Everything's fluid, we're responsive. We should change things. So this is my assumption here and we can convey that. I also changed the background color here for the heading, for the, for the navigation to highlight it a bit more and also to separate the rest of the page from it. So I think this would also be a good trick to make this more separate. Now let's take a look at the section below. I'm not very happy with that yet here. It doesn't really work. But what I'm doing here is I kind of want to reference the, the, the title. The, the idea with design is that you always want to reuse what you have once you established it, try to reuse it as often as you can in, in, in similar roles because people will learn what role this is. And maybe we could use it in that way. So maybe we could just say get tickets in only 67 days. So just highlighting this, the contrast here with this purple part is the strongest. And the background color here, we are, it's basically referencing this. And why didn't I like this gray, red color? The red color to me was more as a call to action, a link, a button. But here, the, the text, the titles, the headings and the buttons all have the same color. So I think this is not very helpful to learn, okay, this is interactive, whatever. So not, not quite there yet, 
but here and maybe some separation here I'm not sure about that again later speakers so you have an emphasis on that and it's always kind of referencing I kind of like that approach or idea London web standards we didn't use it on that so if you want to copy a style in Figma you use command alt C which is copying the style and then you use command alt V and then you can paste it and now in this section we want this to be centered and now I'm centering it here and from the color you can take a look at this gray 30 and here I, I added some swatches so that it's it's uh, working and here we have the primary purple so this is the same color basically and we have applied that right here and we kind of learn that this is the heading and now we have the footer yeah okay good to go so what do you think of this? Quick question to you. So what do you think of this approach? What do you think of the structuring? It's always a good idea to zoom out from a bird eye, bird's eyes view, bird eyes view, bird, bird, bird is the word, uh, from this view. And what also helps, and I'm not sure why, but always tilt your head slightly. Every designer has to do that. That's mandatory, it's not an option. If you look at a design, you always have to slightly tilt your head and then you see things differently, I guess. I'm always doing it. I do not know why. What's also helpful is taking off your glasses if you have one or putting on my glasses if you don't have one, then you see everything very blurry and you can see what's most prominent or important, which is also quite helpful to see what stands out most when it comes to contrast and size. All right, so what Daniel, hey, great to see you. Could the state of the browser logo also work as the, an interface with background image or should it be an SVG image? Yeah, maybe it should be an SVG image, I guess. It's a pixeled image right now, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about it. So, but you can zoom in, you see it's pixelated. So, ah, you don't see it because you do not see what I see. Let's switch again. Yeah, here, okay. So now you see what I see, Daniel. <laughs> Yeah, here it's quite, but I think it's still working. And here what I did in Figma, when I used that component, I added it as a background. You can see that then if you access the file, added the image and changed the exposure to 100% and made it larger that way. So you can really use it playing around, but you would have to create a separate asset for it, I guess. So, but here I think it really looks nice how it dissol dis dissolves how it falls apart, not sure about that, yeah. Good, wish ticket and 67 days purple too. Okay, um, yeah, let's see, let's see. Okay, so now let's move on and see the next step of the process. I also copy it from below here and let's talk about that a bit and what things I changed here. Okay, this, still isn't very different but what what i did not like here at the previous version the sections kind of blend together they melt together it's not that clear where the next section is going to start and maybe we could use these waves or this element as a tool or just something that you can show or use how to start a next section and I did it here because what I do not like so much is that you have these dots in the background. You already have dots around this halftone thing and then you do not really need the dots here around the speakers with the, with the, with the images. So maybe you could make this a bit yeah, calmer. Keep calm and design on. So this is something that I would recommend in this case. And what did I do here? I added this wave here on top again and we use this in the background solid background without these dots so maybe this might work fine for that let's remove the interface for a while so that you see it better so what also is different now is that i added ah oh, gorgeous i love this i love this this is so much better and so 
so much more in alignment with the rest of the page, isn't it? Because what do we have? We, we, we're reusing this wave pattern, this organic thing, but it's not that strict and harsh as it was before. It's just much better fitting the typeface and everything else. And speaking about typeface, there's still the wrong typeface used here, but yeah, it will change eventually. And another neat trick I'm going to show you here, you can see that things are also separated a bit here. And I think this also works better. Why does this work better? You see, just take a close look, that this is somehow transitioning here with a gradient from white to this background with the dots again. And this is a neat trick because you can just add a new section without having to change the background color of the section as a whole. So you could, let's say, for example, make this a bit longer so that you see what I mean. You see here, this is the white thing. There's a gradient, a white gradient starting at the top and here becoming transparent at the bottom of this um, wave. And now when I copy that, it's starting a new section again and I do not have to change the background color of that section. Designer trick. Tell me if you like this trick. <laughs> but I think it's a neat trick, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know where I learned this from or where I saw it, but I think it's very helpful. All right. Now let's take a look at another step or at the next step before we think of what might still be there to be improved. Yeah, what I changed here right now, you can see my designer trick again here with this light back uh, transition, white and then smooth gradient to this light gray background. This is not white. The background here is not white, it's light gray. So from white to light gray, but solid white gray. And here we still have these dots. I changed it back again in the process and didn't use the same background color, but let's, let's talk about it later. And now I switched it because I think it kind of was the speakers that are more important or are the tickets and the days more important? What do you think? Let's decide on that right now. What do you think? Are the tickets and the how many days still to go? Is this more important or are the speakers more important? And what you see right here and right now is that again, everything works in conjunction. Everything is connected. The decision about the content and the hierarchy and also the design, they are all connected. So what would you say? Is it the tickets or the speakers that are more interesting to you when you visit the site? Okay, great trick. Thanks, of course, Connie, sure. Sue says speakers, Connie, speakers, Daniela, speakers and topics, because that is the reason I go to a conference. Yeah, sure. Then we have, I am unfamiliar with the speakers. Yeah, you're unfamiliar with the speakers because they do not, do not exist. I just made them up. Carolyn Coder, isn't this a great nickname? Dan Designer and Ellie Accessib Accessibility. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> I think that because you already have the tickets button in the nav, so it's okay to have the speakers there. Yes, I think so too. Depending on mobile and mobile, we should pull it out. We, we only talk about desktop here. Why do we only talk about desktop here? Because it's a mobile first world and everybody's wasting everything from its, from its phone. No, the reason for that is when we design for mobile, everything will look the same. And it's about more design. If we have more canvas and more space, we have to come up with more ideas and really try to convey the hierarchy better because on mobile, everything's just in a column. You have to get the, yeah, basically the order right. But yeah, and it's also easier to use the elements that you already have on desktop and change them then for mobile compared to just making a very narrow design. So this is the reason why we started with that. Okay, Daniel said side question. 
Do you use ChatGPT? Yeah, this is a good question. I used ChatGPT and asked it some things, but it never really worked for my purposes. And um, when it came to recommending me typefaces, it just recommends the ones that are already very popular and it just doesn't know how things look, of course. And since this is a discipline in design, yeah, you ha always have to make up your mind how it looks eventually. All right, so then, yeah, let's, let's stick with that. Let's keep the speakers on top and then only 67 days to go, get the tickets. I think it's an it's okay to add some more text. What I also did is I added a little more text here. And now if I wanted to add this text to the bottom section, I again would use Command Alt C, copy this style, Command Alt V and pay, oh, sorry. So, and paste it in here. It doesn't work because there's something bold in Figma. And if something's bold, it can't copy the same style. So I'm making this not bold and now I'm copying it and then I'm pasting it here. Now it does work. So you see again, how much better this looks with ASAP. It ASAP looks better. No. Is this a word, a sentence even? Not sure about that, but it just looks better. So you can see that this is already really, really, yeah, more fine-tuned. And again, here on the, the navigation here, did you see this blue sky icon? I made it, they do not even have it. They do not even have a vector icon or something. I just had to trace it and use something with the seagulls or something in the, in the blue sky. Yeah, who's on Blue Sky? Tell me in the chat. I'm not. I have email and you should subscribe to the Pimp My Type newsletter if you didn't. And we will take a closer look at ASAP in the upcoming or in two weeks on Font Friday. So then you will also learn a bit more about that typeface and why I think it's superior to doses. All right, moving on. So now what I tried here Next step was that I moved, I'm not sure yet about the logo here. It's quite prominent. It's super, super loud, super strong. And here on this side, maybe it's better to make it a bit smaller and add the date again here and maybe make this also colorful. Not sure about that either. So not so sure about that. But here the header works a bit better and this is now more becoming a navigation as a whole and not just the navigation and the header. This is kind of one element now, which could also be beneficial when you have another page there. You could also add, of course, you have to add a parallax scroll effect where this hides then underneath the wave. Ah, this would be awesome, of course, but yeah, you don't have to do it. You won't, could. All right. So, and now let's take a look at the next level before we then discuss the end result or my, my, my final approach. And maybe I'll, I'll guide you a bit through another approach I did when I started with this. So this is now a detour. Okay, everybody, this is a detour here, detour here. So I tried out some different typefaces or a different typeface for the titles, which also might be interesting because it's super contrasting and very different compared to the other one. So this also would be one way to go. Why would this also work or could work? In this case, the typeface is unbounded, which is also quite neat because it's somehow, it's not really that organic as the other, but it's more like something like folded or with this, yeah, with these arrows in there. I think because it's very different, it would be a very contrasting combination. So it also could work, maybe. But I didn't choose it since here it's super trendy, isn't it? It's gorgeous also, it's gorgeous. But I, I think it wouldn't fit for, for this purpose here. So just to say, because yeah, we do not want this to be that different. So this was just a detour. But when I look at it, I think the hierarchy is even better here in my first draft or idea or step in between of this detour. Because what do we have here? We have just the date, the, uh, the, the, the location, and then welcome. So maybe this is a way to go. And now here's one of my, let's say my final result for now. And then we can discuss it and move on with some Q&A and stuff. So what do we have here? We have 
the date added here again with the same color with the purple below it you have then the intro text which is something that we didn't have with the other version then we have the latest speakers then we have london web standards so this is now very very simplified this is very straightforward compared to this version just comparing it here let's copy it and now and put it side by side we always have to put things side by side and maybe also copy the original design so that we have everything in one zoom zoom one zoom call one thing yeah let's see okay let's zoom in here okay and now compare it so what do we have here three different approaches or three different three versions designers love to make versions you know that if you're a designer you're always making another version the problem is not to make another version the problem is to decide for one design so this is the thing that makes a designer moving on making a decision making up your mind okay but first impression here so what would you say would you pick the design on the left where we have the date here in the top navigation which would be now a bit something like the like a header or even a navigation and then when we would have latest speakers we could also easily imagine just switching here to the browser if this was the venue site and then would venue would be here instead of latest speakers or we would switch to sponsors and yeah we see pimp my type okay and then we see other things there so this i think could be a version we might use or need if it wasn't for the home page we definitely should make a version with a smaller logo so but what do you think for the home page should it be something like this or should it be with the logo more prominent and the text connected and yeah everything i actually really got rid of this um, part with the 67 days to go get tickets kind of put this all together here also change the color here of getting tickets in the heading to make this a bit more seamless also the color of the of the of the text is now in this deep purple and not in the red because yeah too much colors so what would you say and comparing it with the original version yeah as we said i think it's a bit more decided than the original version isn't it it's a bit calmer it's cleaner so let's see what you say topics are even more important where are they about the speakers yeah well that's a good one we could add the topics as well that's a good idea so we could maybe say that this is the name of the speaker and then let's say the how meta is killing us so something like this and it's a great talk i want to watch that and this could now work so or carolyn coda what does she talk about why typography rocks the hood so and she's definitely talking about typography and here early accessibility is talking about making things better for everyone whatever so you have yeah maybe this is something that we should add here and when we see it now it's too bold it's too large it's not really working here hmm. maybe making it bold only i think we should use for the title here not doses again but asap we're mixing these typefaces and we're only using doses in all caps except for here for this title and here we could make it smaller again because the titles might be a bit longer so let's make it 20 or 24 and there it already works better okay so let's see what the others say side question is okay uh, where is blue sky yeah <laughs> So no, the other. Okay, nice work. Thank you, Gustav. Thank you. So yeah, but what would you say? Would you prefer that one 
over that one or that one over that one. So let's say we have, I have to give this name so that you can make up your mind. So we, le let's say this is design one. Let's give it a name. Okay. The child needs to have a name, I think. So we call this tiny header and this one, uh, again, I switched ah, these shortcuts. Come on. So there it is. Hold me closer, tiny header. And this one is called a uh, large header. Okay. What do you prefer? One or two? Tiny header or large header? What do you say? Hold me closer, tiny header. No, I'm not sure. I do not want to influence you, but I think large header is better. <laughs> But we need something like tiny header for the for, for later, I think. For later. I really like how this now is a bit more aligned. But still, you see that this is a bit conflicting maybe. Maybe we should use here the light gray again or make this gray. So that it's not... Nah, it's still not... I'm not sure about it. Gray 70 I'm using now. It's about using less colors, not more. Maybe 20. Yeah, maybe so. And nah, 22. So yeah, it's always, and maybe if I tilt my head, it will look different. It will it? No, maybe, not sure. It's a bit too far apart. Let's maybe move it closer. Mm. Again here, move it closer. I could spend hours just looking at these details. Yeah, maybe. What do you say? So let's see. Gustav says number two is working better. And then we have large header, large header, tiny header with colors for the, uh, says Daniela, for the menu of the large header. Uh, yeah, maybe. Then large header. I would go with the large header from Miriam. It is more minimalistic and calm. I like your version with the emphasis on the date and the speakers. As a user, you want to buy tickets, you know when to go at the top of the menu bar. That's true. So then we have Gustav, also number two with the large header. And then we have Stefan. I would go with the large header. I miss an information in um, invitation in the tiny header. I guess the SEO aspect of a larger header with some text is better as well. Yes. I think we should stick with the large header as well. So yeah, we need to have a separate version for the smaller text. I think then when it comes to the sub pages, when it comes to the ticket page. So if we then eventually would buy the tickets just to copy that quickly and take a look at that and scaling that down here, taking a look at the menu, making this a bit smaller, then it could move up there somehow, something like that. And then we could also, let's get rid of this. And then if we got rid of that, it could now, let's take a look at that, move that one up there as well, something like that. And then we would have a sub page, for example, like an individual page then about a, a talk, for example. That where is something? I think in 2022 there was the the pages of the of the speakers, like for example this creativity web. Yeah, you see that there's so much going on. You have the title of the talk. You have to, so it's so hard to make up your mind. You have this crashing, but if you would just maybe use it then this way, but you would have to make up your mind. So when we had here about Alistair, you could use this style for so much then, for example. And then the image here, we have the image here, copy, paste it in here. Oh, sorry. Ah, come on, come on Figma. So paste, whatever, I don't. I cannot operate here, so, but you get what I mean. And then you could use the image here and then you could remove all the other stuff you don't need. 
and maybe now this needs to be a bit smaller because it's on the side and it's not 44, it's 28. You need to make this a system now. Maybe you could use a break in there. Also, so you get what I mean. And then you have the text on the left side. You can remove that as well. And then you can add the text on the right side. It would be easier to read when you copy it from here. So moving it there. Speaking of the hierarchy, it would be definitely better to have it on the right side, I think. So then we copy that, we paste it in here, sorry. So interesting. So yeah, there it is. All right. So much more readable than the other version and so on and so on. All right. Okay, what do we have again? So I would not go with the large header. I miss an information addition to tiny header. Yeah, that we uh, that we are. You can stop fiddling with padding margin and then go <laughs> to see it at 17. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. So um, yeah, I know about color contrast. I know. Yeah. So. The color contrast thing is true, Eric, definitely. And what would I do here? So we have some plugins. Let's take a look and see if this still applies. I always like to use the Stark Accessibility plugin and we have to duplicate this because I'm not sure if this about is working with the background and check the contrast and it is not. <laughs> Eric, you're absolutely right but we would have to change it then and make it a bit more darker. So we should go with a darker gray, oh, it's too dark then. So let's, let's see how dark it can go and you can also do this with the Stark plugin. Let's take a look again, does it work here? And then you can use some suggestions, but it doesn't work because I'm not a pro user. So yeah, I'm not. So, but you would then make this here darker and see, is it working now? Plugin, Stark Accessibility Tool, Contrast. I'm not sure if this is correct even. So let's, no, it's not. Let's see. Let's see. Foreground, still not working. Still not 4.52, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, it's working because it's bold and needs to be at least three to one. So it is working when it comes to that. Yeah, thanks Eric for the input. We didn't check for color, color contrast. Ah, does it work? I think it's taking too much time now to check for me. Sorry. What is it here? Ah, it doesn't work. Okay. Anyway, anyway, we got to do it differently. So we definitely, are, I can't stop checking. So, but I also, let's keep it that way. So yeah, we got to check if it's at least three to one because it's a heading, it's large, it's bold, it should work with the background. But the first one I think was two to one, two something to one. So it really doesn't, yeah, this is not working. But here, is it working now? Come on. If you have two colors in one selection, it doesn't work. So. Ah, not working yet. Come on. Now. Okay. Yeah, but you get what I mean. I'm going to change that. So topic title is missing. I know, I know. So, but we will not dive into that for now, but let's wrap this up maybe and leave a bit room if you have any more questions because as I said, it's already quite hot in here, but now let's leave a bit room for a question. And now that we decided for one result with the larger heading, I think here we do not have any problem with the contrast. We do not have, I'm sure of that when it comes to that, but we might have a problem with that one. We also might have a problem with that one to the background color. So this might be not that great. However, this will work. So, any questions? Yeah, thanks for saying it, Eric. It definitely is important to point it out. 
and uh, you do not ruin the party. I already was super mean to everybody who designed this site and I was super, super arrogant and <laughs> cocky and stupid. So um, accessibility is always killing the party. <laughs> no, you really should have to consider it. And I learned so much from you. Eric also was a guest on the, on the YouTube channel here about the color contrast issue where I also learned that things work definitely if they ha are clear in context and work. So uh, that, th that's, that's a great video you should watch about color contrast and accessibility on Pimp My Type. All right, do you prefer Figma or XD? Ah, Sebastian, of course I prefer Adobe Figma and they did not ruin it yet. So I'm quite surprised that they are still going strong and working. So this is quite neat, quite nice. Yeah, Figma is my tool of, or my weapon of choice, so to say. Yeah, going to stick with that. All right, so if you do not have any other questions, then I think we could wrap this up. One suggestion here for you, if you're not already a subscriber to the Pimp My Type newsletter, you definitely should be. There's the URL is pimpmytype.com slash newsletter, where you can sign up for my weekly font recommendations. On Friday, I'm going to recommend a quite crazy typeface. Yeah, you do not want to miss that. The week after, spoiler, ASAP is going to be reviewed by me so you can get more insights on the typeface we used today for the redesign and also you will get tomorrow a link to the Figma file. So a link to the Figma file where you can see what I made, maybe reuse the components and, and, and really access this everything. If you sign up for the newsletter you will also get a link to a concise version or a summary of this of this stream today not a video summary but in the blog i'll also repost that so if there are no more questions i really want to thank you for spending such a hot day if you're on the northern hemisphere at least in spain and arizona it was super hot such a hot day today with me I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found the result quite cool. Let's take another look at that, how it looked before and after, so that you really see what we worked on. We had today, the first version was that, and the second version was much calmer, much easier. So here, so much going on. We had tickets, we had the, the map, everything, speakers too much going on and then we just streamlined it together we made it cleaner calmer also ah, come on Figma uh, calmer we also added some nice effects that fit better to the overall aesthetics of the site we reused the typeface for the headings we used a different typeface for the body text except here it's the wrong one. Oh my god how could I so here's the right one. So we really made this more appealing. And I hope there is something that you could take away from this short webinar. Really enjoyed it. And I'm looking very much forward to your comments, feedback, and see you in the next one.